This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey guys, and welcome to another video. In this video, I want to cover a few different topics. One of those is my most asked question. I also want to share a few pixel tips on my techniques and workflow, and hopefully you can learn a lot from this video. This is a new format that I'm trying out because I'm running a bit out of ideas that can work for a long lasting video. So hopefully you like this experimental format here. <laughs> All right, here we are. The first tool that I want to talk about is the outline tool. It's a fairly new feature that was added to Asprite. So let me start out by showing how you get it and how it works. So the first thing I want to do here is select the object that I want to use this new feature on. You can see here we can go up to edit, effects, outline, or we can press shift O to get this tool. All right, so here's a little window that opens up with a bunch of information. So let's just quickly go over this and what it all does. So the outline color is obviously the color for your outline. Let's just go with a sharp red for now so we can see what's happening. All right, next up here, we can set it to outside or inside. So that basically uh, tries to draw the outline on the outside on what you have selected, or it tries to fill the inside of what you have selected. Um, so you can see the difference here. I could almost even t take the inside here and then select a black color. Uh, and that way I would get a solid black outline. Um, that might need a bit of retouching if I were to do it that way, but it's an option. And next up, I want to talk about this over here because this is the interesting part. So you can set some preset here on how the outline should be generated on your selection. While I'm clicking on these four here, you can also see these down here, they change. And that's because these are some presets and here you can kind of set them the way you want it yourself. So here in the center is your sprite and you can say, I want the outline to be accounted on all the pixels on the top, on the bottoms, on the left and right. And then if you wanted to have them on the corners, you can do that too. What's cool about this is that let's say that I want to make a drop shadow. I can take it here on the corner like this, press OK, Shift O again, select the same color or a different color and you get this kind of drop shadow effect. So you can also use it for like a drop shadow uh, as well as you can use it for an outline. Next up we have this here, which can go between selected or all. So to show this, I actually want to open up a different sprite real quick. All right, so here I got a character for a game that I'm currently working on, plugging time. <laughs> If you want to know more about that, feel free to follow me on Twitch where I work on my projects. Anyway, let's try and select a few frames here, open it up here. And you can say here, if I say select it, and let's just again, take a sharp color so we can see what's happening. Let's make a thick outline and I press okay on selected. You can see that it has only made the outline on the frames that I have selected when I click about down here in the timeline. Now the cool thing is, let's say that I wanted an outline on all my frames. I can press shift O again, instead of selected, set it to all, pick a sharp red color again, just for preview and boom, there we go. Have the outline on all the frames of the animation. So that's the basics about the new outline tool and one of the new features that uh, not a lot of people know about, but is super handy. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is how we can use masking for our tools. I personally mostly use it for the fill tool, but you can use it for pretty much any tool that can use a color as well. So let's take a quick look of what this is. You can see how I can like draw with a color that I have selected. The same way we can select a empty color or a masking color just by sampling the background here. It's also by default as your right click, as you can see down here, if you haven't changed it. So you can see here how I can erase just by right clicking. And that's because my right click color is the mask. Now you can use this for any tool. So I could take my bucket tool here and you can see how I can erase everything in my image this way. So instead of trying to go in and erase like certain colors here, if I wanted to change it, I can just take the fill tool, right click and remove all the colors. I want to make sure that continuous is turned off. Obviously, if I wanted to work on all the colors and if that is turned on, I can just do it on parts of the color like this. 
Now this case here might be a little bit weird, but it's just to kind of showcase how the tool works. Now the masking can also be used to any tool. So let me try and select a filled rectangle here and right click. And you can see I can kind of erase just by right clicking. And I can do that too if I were to take like a ellipse tool. Um, but just keep in mind that light you can select a color and draw with it. You can also select the background and draw with it or use it on any other tool. And it's mostly handy in terms of like using it on a different tool, right? All right, next up is a little bit of a shorter topic that I want to talk about, but that is snapping to grid. Um, it's something that I use a lot, <laughs> um, but it's a very few cases where I actually use it. Now, this is a little bit more over on the personal preference things, but let's take a look at what it is. All right, so the first thing I want to do is press Control K here. And I want to make sure that my grid is set to a size that I personally like. I'm going to make it visible here so you can see how it worked in action. All right, let me select this. So I'm going to drag this around. And now when I hold Alt, you can see how it snaps to the grid. Now you can also do this by the selection. So you can see your selection is kind of free now. But if we press Shift S, that turns on snapping. And you can see it's turned on because it's going to uh, say here, disable snap to grid. But I have it on now and you can see here how I can grab this and I can just drag it around and I can separate my tiles here if I do want to do that. But let me show you a case where I use it a lot. So when I work on a game project, I kind of have most of the art in one big sprite like this. And once I need to animate something or separate it, I drag it into its own file. But let's say down here, I have a lot of characters that I'm managing right now and I want to like move these around. I can select this and just grab them out here and I can sort of manage my, my, um, my art sheet here just by dragging these around. And it's really nifty because just because it's nice to sort of keep um, everything in some sort of grid form. Now there are plenty of ways this can be used. Um, I mostly just use it to track things around and managing things. But I just wanted to share this little tip because it's something that I use a lot and perhaps there's someone out there who can find it really useful too. All right, the next tip I want to talk about is something a little more on the artsy fartsy part. And that is how to get a good consistency on the size in your sprites. I think my most asked question ever is what size should my sprite be? I do already have a video where I talk about how to figure out what size your sprite should be, but I want to give you a tip once you have a size for your main character on how to keep a good consistency on all your sprites up through the project. So a lot of what you'll see now is again, a very case by case thing. There's never a one way of doing things, especially when it comes to art. But what I like to do when I make a game and manage sprites is that I try to sort of make this line here that says like, what is a good size that an enemy or NPC can be, right? And again, nothing here has to be in a certain way. There isn't really any rules when it comes to art. That's the beauty about it. But it's good to kind of have some guidelines. So let's again jump into this sprite sheet here. So when I make a character for this game that I'm currently working on, I have the main character and I have an NPC that is a very average height. And then when I want to start drawing a new character, I try to sort of figure out what, what do I want this character to look like? Let's say I want a little guy um, I can see here, all right, he should be around this size. This is a good size for a little guy. Let's make him a little chubby. All right, so here I got a silhouette for a character and sure this can be cleaned up a lot, but you can kind of see this is how a lot of my character starts out. I got just kind of silhouetted and then I start like drawing things on it. But this way, <laughs> this way, he's a heavy boy. But this way I can see, all right, he's in a good size range. Uh, he's not too small, he's not too big. And like, 
a character can't be bigger than this. I mean, I have this guy up here who is quite big compared to this here, right? But it's just a good indication to say, oh, an average human is roughly around this size. Um, but if something is bigger than an average human, it obviously need to be, um, be a lot bigger than this size, right? So try and make an average size uh, NPC or character for reference and your main character. And then you can see, I kind of have a few reference over here on the right size if I need some kind of like size difference on everything. In other words, my tip is try and find out the average size of your main character and a random NPC. And once you have that, you kind of use those as a reference to draw the rest of the cast for the game. And you can even use it for other things. If you were to draw a door, this is perfect reference because you know like an average human have to roughly be inside um, this size here to be able to enter a door, right? So have some kind of reference sheet. So on, on the topic of all this size stuff here, and again, I really recommend you checking out this video right here, um, but I never create a new file and make it like 32 or 30 something and draw a character. I try to have a big reference sheet where I draw the character and one he, once he's drawn, I copy him out and put him into a new file here. See, using the mask fill here and then again, shift O. And uh, here I got a little naked boy. So let's quickly put some pants on him so I don't get demonetized. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful art. No, but it's, it's just to show you the workflow and the way I manage things, right? That's the idea about this. So I hope this tip can help you out to find the size, manage your sprites and move it around. Now, if you want more tips and tricks, maybe today's sponsors can help you out. Skillshare is an online learning hub with over 25,000 courses on anything from art, animation, game development and many, many more things. MissLab over on Skillshare has a beginner course with a lot of basic information that I even haven't covered yet that uh, you can check out if you would like to learn more and you feel like I'm uploading videos too slow. <laughs> And with that said, you can get two months for free if you use the link down in the description right now. Otherwise, a monthly subscription is less than $10 with unlimited access to all their courses. Now, thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. I hope you like this little more tips in one video format. Uh, I have some more tips coming up for the next video. One of those are talking about fonts and text in Pixlark. Um, yeah, and if you want to follow me more, I stream almost daily over on Twitch. I post everything I make on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you around. Take care, everyone.